and we are live. Uh, that's really enjoyable. I was asked if I can order a special tune for the starter, like an you know boxing gale, but you can't. Unfortunately, that's something for the next year probably. So uh, welcome to the squeaky. I will talk about time representation and computer sy systems. So how we represent time and what can possibly go wrong with time. And I will not do that because I'm qualified with millions of cat pictures on my Instagram account, but because I had been on this project that started with this tiny bit of XML. Uh, to give a bit of context, uh, this is a representation of a timetable of buses in a town I live. Uh, so obviously there is uh, much more than just this single row, but you might ask and for sure you're asking, what the hell does this mean? And why this date is so weirdly um, stated? Uh, yeah, that's, that's wrong representation, and it's wrong on multiple levels, and we'll start from that and get down to the rabbit hole. So, um, why it's 19th century, uh, you might ask. Uh, but that pretty much goes to the question, what is time zero in our computer system? And that's a fairly easy question. We are all Java developers. We know the answer. It's time zero for Epoch is 1st of January 1970. But it's not entirely true. Because different systems or different operating systems, different programming models and languages tend to uh, have a different time zero. Uh, for example, for Postgres database, uh, it's 1st of January 2000. And for Microsoft.NET, it's 1st of January 1. Why not? And for us, it was 30th of December 18, uh, 1899, because that was the database that the data was coming from, and that was Microsoft.com representation of date. Why not? Yeah, so that brings me to the first falsehood I would like to talk about, that we believe that Epoch is a universal representation of time zero in our computer systems, uh, but it isn't. Uh, nevertheless, we had this date, and well, let's try to, to convert, because what we are really interested in wasn't the whole date when I'm at the bus station or bus, bus stop, I'm in really interested in the time when my bus arrives or when my bus leaves. So I'd like to uh, convert it. My representation in the XML in the SOAP message was uh, a date time, which ended up in Java as a Gre Gregorian calendar, because, because why not? So let's, let, let's convert. Uh, yeah, in Java <clears throat> 9, you don't have this XML data types anymore, but you can get it as a dependency, so we'd like to convert. Uh, yes, we would like to get an instance, so a representation of seconds from the start of an epoch. Makes sense to get a time out of this time zone, isn't it? Uh, so we would like to get a number of seconds from 1970. Um, and yes, in Java, uh, come on. Uh, yes, in Java, you can have. Um, uh, you can have a negative time. Fair enough. Uh, but I would like to get a local time, so I'm converting further. So I take local time out of instant. I have to tell the, uh, the time zone, because I, ha I don't have a time zone in my rep string representation, and have a local time. That makes perfect sense if I would like to get a time of my bus, isn't it? So another question to you. What will be the output? What will be the outcome of this line? Will it be 7.20? Will it be 7.44? Will it be 7.04? Or will it be 6.20? We can vote. Who is for A? Okay. Who is for B? Okay. One person, two person, two people. Who is for C? Two. Who is for D? Nice. And uh, who is not raising hand for stupid questions? <laughs> so the answer is B. <laughs> uh, because we believe that Warsaw is UTC plus one 
or UTC plus two if it's uh, no, summertime, all right? It is, it is like that, that's totally true, but it's since 1977. <laughs> <laughs> and Java is a consistent language in that matter, because it was UTC plus one in 60s, and it was UTC plus one or plus two in 50s, and it was UTC plus one hour and 24. <laughs> <laughs> and as you could have seen the date, it was 19, uh, 1899, so that, yeah, that makes perfect sense, right? So that's, that's our time shift, and that's exactly what I got from, uh, from Java. So another falsehood, my time zone will never change. That's, that's not true. Um, time zones change on a regular basis. There is a whole table of changes in the time zone. Sometimes they change in advance. You can look up the table and say that, yeah, Europe, well, if Europe decides to drop the um, summertime, or some countries decide, uh, then we'll be able to look up this table. Sometimes the information there is pretty quickly, sometimes it's just hours before the change, depending on the country. Uh, yeah, that's the really changes. And to give you an example, because you might say that, yeah, this is like 50 years old, you know, that never happens. Well, it does. Uh, let's pretend you're Samoa. You know what's Samoa Island? You've heard of it? Uh, this is Samoa Island. Uh, Samoa and American Samoa. To give you a context where it is, it's more or less here. So middle of Pacific Ocean. And uh, they are lucky folks because they are close to international dateline. The dateline isn't exactly like this, but just to give you, uh, to give you a context. So in... 2011, eight years ago, someone thought, it's okay, we're living in the Pacific, it's a nice place to live, but the problem is that we do most of our business with Australia and Japan. And when they have a weekend and they are waking up for their Saturday breakfast, we are still on Friday and going to work. That doesn't make sense. So they decided on the, well, they decided to change the time zones because UGC minus 11 didn't work for them. So on 29th of December, 2011, Samoa Island decided to skip the date. And from 29th of December, they went straight to 21st of December. Because why not? And that wouldn't be big of a problem, but 100 kilometers away from Samoa Islands, there was American Samoa, which was an American territory like Hawaii. They didn't want to change the time zones. So now we have a situation that within 100 kilometers, which is a reasonable distance, we have UDC plus 12 and UDC minus 11. Because why not? They are different countries do business with different people, makes a perfect sense. So, maybe the rule of a game for programming should be keep your date as simple as possible. Like, think how you should represent it and keep it as simple as possible. There is even a term for that, it's called wall time, like the time I have on my wall. And sometimes that's what I'm interested. Because, take birthday, like I'm, I was born on 2nd of January, my parents probably hate me for that, but that was their fault. And I don't really care what time zone I'm in to celebrate my birthday. 2nd of January is the 2nd of January. It's a world time. So maybe that's, maybe, that's, uh, maybe that's an approach. So let's convert. Let's just forget about all those freaking dates and take this uh, time from the timetable and convert it to string and take local time. Yeah, that, that works, that's, that works uh, slightly, uh, slightly better. But that can bring us to another falsehood, that we can use wall time for everything. Yeah, always stick to wall time. Well, that's one of the approaches. But then there is a fair chance that you end up as a Russian Olympic shooting team. In 1908, for the London Olympic Games, there were um, invited, they, they want to go for the, sh for the Olympics. So they wrap up their stuff, save the day, head the road, and arrive two days too late. 
missing their game. Not because like traveling from Russia to London takes ages and they like had a flight delay. No, that's not the case. They they didn't take Ryanair. Uh, so Great Britain was a Gregorian calendar since 18th century. However, Russians turned to Gregorian calendar in 1918, and they shifted 14 days. So you're doing the math. In, 2000, uh, in 1908, there was still a new Lunar calendar, so they, they stick to the wrong wall clock. So maybe UTC for all the things. Yeah, that makes sense sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. So let's get to our example of the timetables. If that's my timetable, I can go for I can go for uh, zoned time. So if I have a Z, I have UTC time now. All my dates are UTC, so at least I have a certain consistency when transforming those dates. However, that doesn't make sense from rational point of view because that timetable is for Warsaw or for Gdańsk where I live. So it's a different time zone. So why should I put UTC there, not uh, and it, like not my local time zone. That would make more sense. However, when I'm at the bus stop, I don't really care about the date. And still, why there is this 1899? So the problem was that somebody who was storing those dates had a date time um, value, well, that date, date time type in the database, but they didn't really care about the date, so they put a zero date, and they up, ended up with uh, 1899. So maybe there is a better way to store this kind of information. Maybe what I'm really interested in is how much time has passed from the beginning of the date, because that's what timetables are about, aren't they? So maybe for this internal representation, I'm not really interested in Three forty-eight, but I'm more interested in how much time uh, passed from midnight because the timetable changes every day. There is a new timetable for well, there is a different timetable for every day, and they can change. So maybe I could I should store just minutes as a passing time, or maybe I can um, store it more Java-oriented as a passing time and as a, a duration format. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe not. The problem is with the timetables that you can't take local time because a day for the timetables has more than 24 hours. Because it can, it is technically possible that, yeah, uh, it's technically possible. Yes, that's the slide I was missing. It's technically possible that a certain bus will have a timetable that will be longer than 24 hours. They will start their um, trip today, but it will end up tomorrow. Night buses is, 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 a perfect, is a perfect example. So the thing is that there is no silver bullet, UTC, non-UTC, wall time, non-wall time. It doesn't make sense because the domain you're in differentiate how you can store it, how you can store it, the time. So, if we start, if if we just if we just keep uh, the passing time, if we just keep the difference in time, uh, we can convert it fairly simply. So I can keep just a long value and have a passing time, and have my exact time as a duration, as a as a shift of duration from midnight on the date I'm interested in. Oh, that's one of the uh, that's one of the po possible possible approaches. So the the thing I would like to leave you is it it all depends. UTC is not always wrong thing, but it's not always uh, the right thing as well. It just it just depends. So thank you very much. Uh, you can look up the slides, and if you are interested more in this kind of falsehoods, there's quite a few nice and interesting articles how we might screw ourselves misrepresenting time in the computer systems. Uh, so enjoy the rest of the conference and enjoy the lunch if you haven't grabbed your sandwich. Thank you very much.